This right here is just the power of Mamoswine and Ninetales working together. That Unite move from the Ninetales does so much damage. It does even more damage when the targets are frozen. And the sustain and just the pure damage and execution when they're on low with the Mamoswine. He's able to stick around for so long. He's got that Rapid Fire Scarf and the X Attack. It's a brutal combination. So these are the two builds you can see. They're pretty much identical. And the Rapid Fire Scarf is what makes this lane so so strong okay because we both know that their boosted basics leave you unable to act and you've got two of them with a rapid fire scarf and a muscle band it's so hard to handle so early what you're looking to do is just feed that nine tails get that nine tails online provide the vision let that nine tails get the back farm because with the mammoth swine ice shard is really really good to secure it's really nice. So you can throw out an ice shard and here you can see I'm able to get that secure on their farm and tackle to get away while my nine tails has been able to get or just about get online with this piece of farm here. It's a little dicey there, but we're able to pick that up and now we're super, super strong at this first set of bees. Now a big benefit to this lane is that you've got the tank and you've got the ranged attack. So you've got that, you've got both versatile roles and it's really, really hard to score if you decide to play passive because Mamoswine's ability makes the scoring of the enemy slower when you're using the, your skills on them. So it's a really, really good ability if you're just trying to play passive and stop the stacking of other teams. Yes, because you can fight them both, but you also slow down their scoring as well, which is really, really big. And they both help you get out here. You can see the eye shard, the tackle mobility. So... Your role as that ma as the Mamoswine is you're trying to get the Ninetales online, you're trying to get the Ninetales strong, and then when you get your level 5, when you've got Icicle Crash, now you can look to get those big burst damage and gauges going. So here we're doing a little bit of a dance for farm, we're trying to catch them over committing, okay, we've staffed their Elder Goss. Now here you can see, right about at this point here, my focus band is getting ready to be procced again. So it's just about to go on cooldown. We know they're in this lane and we can engage a fight because we've got that big burst damage. I've still got that X attack. So you can see, I see them attack. I strongly engage. It looks like we're in trouble, but because we've got that rapid fire scarf, the X attack and the muscle band with the focus band kicking in as well. The nine tails here, you can see the Venusaur should have killed me, but he was completely unable to attack. So massive value here. Their jungler obviously doing the mid farm comes down and then he's unable to attack. So early, this lane is insanely strong. If you use it well with your laning partner, you really have got little to no excuse to lose your lane. At worst, you should be keeping 50-50. You should be keeping even. So here again, I'm looking to bait out those enemies. Here you can see I'm standing in front of my nine tails. Okay, we're looking for them to overcommit. As soon as they overcommit, bang. I dive in with the Mamoswine. We've got the Aurora Veil. We've got the burst damage. Heaps and heaps and heaps of value there. And then we break that bottom goal so we don't let them get all the farm there. They've just got their back in DDs. And then again, this is the engage we saw at the start. The Ninetales gets the ult. Does that massive burst damage there. And then again, Mamoswine's just looking to clean up. Now by this time, that focus band has come back online because it's got that internal cooldown. We're good, we're ready to go. So we get a lot of value there early game. These two are really strong early. Now here we've got this Reggie Leckie. Our top lane have done amazing. They've broken the top goal. And so I'm saying, yep, let's go. I'm ready to push this. I've got my Unite move. Let's brute force this Reggie Leckie in because they don't have the jump pad. We have Unite moves. And so I'm just looking to bait them out. I'm looking to make them dance, make that Regilecki get them a little bit weaker. And here you can see that we've got one dead. I'm scouting, I'm looking to engage. I'm hoping my attack doesn't die. That's why I was spamming that retreat. And then bang, we're able to get that Unite move off. The big burst damage there. I'm just catching them on their base, making them unable to move. The Regilecki does eventually get in because we get heaps and heaps of kills. There's so much AOE and burst damage there and we force that Regilecki in. And that's something you can do with that dual ice. Okay, so long as, again, we've got good teammates in our duo queue, so that's really, really nice for us. But that's something you can do. So this first half of the match, those first two quarters, this lane is unbelievably powerful. 
Okay, you get massive power spikes early. You can bully the lanes, but where this lane drops off is in this second half here. Okay, it's when the enemies start getting their power spikes because there are a lot of characters that do this really well. Now here you can see I get picked off. I should have played that a lot smarter. I should have played a lot more passive and had a look at the map because my team was not anywhere in a position to help me there. So I should have been aware of that and played a lot more passive. Okay, now here I'm just venturing. I'm having a look at the map. I'm seeing, okay, we've got a little bit of an advantage top here. Let's try and take this Reggie Leckie. When I know we're not going to force this into the base. Now my job as the Mamoswine is to zone. Okay, if I die, it does not matter. I've got my Unite move here. I know I can use it and get it back. All I'm looking to do is stun them and zone them so they can't get for, in for the secure. I know I don't need that Unite move to push it. All we're looking to do there is get that Regieleki so we're forcing them to defend it, hopefully blow a couple Unite moves, and then we can farm the rest of the map. Okay, now I just want to take this moment here to just analyze my play as a defender. Now, defenders are not my main, but I feel like I've got a pretty good understanding on how to play them. This is a big mistake for me. I knew I shouldn't have engaged this here. Okay, I was just getting greedy. I was getting overconfident, especially after that quad kill. I didn't want them to get that Regieleki. Okay, I, I managed to get the Gardevoir out, the Gardevoir ult move there, the Unite move. But it's just, again, it just was not worth it. I managed to die. They get the objective. I don't get any kills. Their team doesn't get any experience there. So really, that was a mega net, po uh, net negative exchange for our team because of the play I made as a defender. So not a lot of value other than burning the Gardevoir ult, which, again, that does have some good value. But overall, I think they got a little bit more out of that. So not the best for us. So we're getting to this point late in the game. Please don't do what my Venusaur just did then and use your Unite move for no reason at all. Um, you want to save that Unite move for the last two minutes. And really, you're looking for your positioning here. So I know we're not getting that Regieleki. I'm making sure we're zoning and they're not going to get it. I'm just recharging that uh, health pool there because I know the fight's not going to engage too quickly. I'm spamming that retreat button just because I know we don't need to engage this fight. Okay, and I'm, I'm the Mammoth Swine. My role is to engage it. So I'm spamming the retreat. Here we can see there's a bit of vision. They're kind of tickling the Rayquaza. So I'm going, okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and engage a group of them here. So here I see the Gardevoir. He's the big carry. I've probably gone a little deep there. So I forced myself back in. But sometimes this is what happens when you play as a defender. Okay, everyone dies. Now, whose fault is it? Is it like, well... It's kind of everyone's fault, okay? I probably should have been taking more hits in the mid. I'm surprised that the team didn't survive because I took out such a big damage dealer and they just completely team wiped us. But sometimes that happens, okay? This is why I think 9,000 and Mamoswine, they are first half heavy. You get ahead, you get a lead, but it's really, really hard to close out a game well in comparison to some of the other combinations you can do like if you're an Aegislash for an example or a Lucario uh, or, or even a Pikachu you've got so much more late game uh, mobility you've got late game plays those skills you can use a lot better so that's my take on this lane mega strong early can fall off late game